Okay, everybody, today I'm going to talk about the Enlightenment, aka also known as the Age of Reason. And it was the intellectual movement uh, in Europe in the 1600s to 1700s. And I want to make something clear. I've talked about many uh, influential leaders Napoleon, Bonaparte, Lenin, you know, Stalin, Hitler, all these people are influential. I've talked about many nations uh, and revolutions like the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution. But one thing we must uh, not uh, look um, look uh, for uh, over. Uh, I mean, what could I say? Um, one thing we should not uh, yeah, uh, overlook is the Islamic civilization, which I will do a video of. And because the Islamic civilization was enlightened by much uh, earlier than Europe. And when I like to talk about the Enlightenment age, I like to think that it was the age where Europeans came out of the darkness and into the lightness by leaving the church. The church called for... Uh, it was anti-scientific. It did not want science because it believed it threatened it. Islam is different. Islam called people to study science. And even in Islam, there is a, uh, a saying that, if it, uh, that everything, uh, every disease has a cure. And that's what brought Muslim uh, scientists to start thinking of new diseases, uh, new cures for diseases. So when I talk about the Enlightenment age, I'm talking about the age of reason in Europe. Let's so let's just get started. So what is the uh, the the origins of the Enlightenment in Europe? It's a psychotheology. It was an attempt inspired by science to explain. God's providence by reference to his work in nature and not primary, uh, primarily through his biblical word. The support of a rational religion free from mysteries, miracles, and superstitions was, was thought of during that time. So religious. There is something called deism and this is the belief in the existence of a God or a supreme being but a denial of a revealed religion based on one's belief on the nature on the light of nature and reason these saw no point in any particular religion religion they recognized only a distant god uninvolved in the daily life of man so they believed that there was there was something that created this world but he did not or he or she this god did not uh, you know uh, uh, interfere in human lives uh, this is this is what deism is so what is pantheism it is the belief that God and nature are one and the same gradually high educated Protestants and Catholics thought more about God's work as revealed through science rather than uh, through than through uh, scriptures because there was many things in the Bible that did not agree completely with what science showed us. So the characteristics of the Enlightenment: there is rationalism, and it is the reason. Uh, the re uh, it is reason is the arbiter of all things. Uh, there was cosmology. It was a new concept of man, uh, his existence on Earth, and the place of the uh, of of the Earth in the universe. So it is the concept of man. And his place on Earth, and the place of Earth in this universe, and their secularism. It is the application of methods of science to religion and philosophy, where you, where there is a, where there is a separation between church and state. There is a separation between church and uh, ch church and um, uh, and and science. What is the scientific method? The scientific method was developed by a Muslim scientist named 
uh, Ibn al-Haytham and he is one of the greatest in, uh, 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 um, scientists uh, during the uh, and, and he influenced many of the European scientists so what is the scientific method? the th scientific method says that there must be a mathematical analysis of uh, and observing an object then there's experimentation of the object and then there is inductive reasoning and inferring on why something happens in a w in 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 a, in, a, in a such matter. So utilitarianism, it, it, and what is utilitarianism? This is also one of the characteristics of the Enlightenment, where the great the greatest good for the greatest number. And we're going to take this as an example in the United States. If uh, a plane with a hundred people is going to crash into a tower with uh, 30,000 people okay should we kill the 100, 100 people on the plane or should we leave the plane to hit the building well it, utilitarianism is the greatest good for the greatest number so I if 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 uh, the American government had believed in uh, had used this theory during that time they would shoot down the plane Carrying a hundred people, in order to to uh, for that uh, in order to save the thirty thousand people in the building. See what I'm saying? And another characteristic of the Enlightenment was tolerance. So no opinion is worth burning your neighbor for. And I believe Voltaire said that. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but the idea is that we must accept other religions, other theories, other uh, ways and opinions of other people in this world. Another characteristic of the Enlightenment is optimism and self-confidence. The belief that man is in uh, in uh, instinct, uh, instinctly good. And this uh, contradicts in the Bible and, and some of the Bible uh, Bible texts where they believe uh, where Christians believe that uh, man is born evil the belief in social progress and this is optimism freedom is one of the most important characteristics of enlightenment it's the freedom of thought and expression it is bringing liberty to all men and it is a, it is it was the modern battle against absol uh, absolutism that was presented by the kings and queens at the time also, one of the characteristics of the Enlightenment is the education of the masses and the belief that everyone should have the right to education. So, and also part of the characteristics of Enlightenment was legal reforms, justice, kindness, and charity. There is no such thing as torture or indiscriminate incarcerations. There is a due process of law. And there's no such thing as I could blame someone for something without any evidence and he just goes to jail. There's something, uh, constitutionalism, written constitutions listing citizens' rights. This is the one of the characteristics of the Enlightenment that was also brought by the Islamic civilization because I do not like to <coughs> discredit a, 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 a class. A, a, a group if they had not uh, if they had did something so the Muslims uh, the Prophet uh, of Islam uh, Muhammad uh, had written uh, the Constitution of Al Medina when he where it was a constitution a set laws that were implied uh, were applied to Muslims Jews and Christians living in the Medina at the time there's also also cosmopolitanism so what is the great debate the great debate is between reason and logic rationalism uh, tolerance uh, deism between traditions and superstition uh, and, and this uh, mainly goes on to Christianity where they would for example the Vatican believed that it was the center of the earth and Galileo said, you know what, uh, the, the Vatican is not the center of this universe. And, universe. and so there was this great debate between ro reason and logic and uh, 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 essentially Christianity. The Enlightenment. So this applied to reason, the scientific method, to the human world, not just the natural world.
uh, it stimulated religious tolerance. The Enlightenment stimulated religious tolerance between everyone. It fueled democratic revolutions around the world in America, in France, in Latin America, and all these nations that were, uh, were touched by the Enlightenment and called for political freedom. So, who are some of the Enlightenment philosophers? We have Tom Hobbes, and I, he wrote the Levithian. He, uh, I talked about Tom Hobbes. You can click on the link, and uh, it, it will be on this page. Uh, let's go to the next person. John Locke. I also talked about John Locke in another video. It will be... Uh, there will be a link on this page on this uh, in, right now somewhere on the screen so click on it if you want to know more about John Locke who was an enlightenment philosopher there is also Baron de Montesquieu who is another very important enlightenment philosopher I have also done another video on Montesquieu if you want to watch uh, it you, there will be a link uh, on this screen there is John Jean Jack Rousseau who is also another very important philosopher uh, he wrote the social contract there I have done a video on him so click there will be a link on the screen again uh, on Jean Jack Rousseau Voltaire is very is one of the most important and you must study him if you are interested in the enlightenment there is there will be a link on the screen uh, uh, to uh, to a video on Voltaire just Voltaire uh, Mary, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft she is also one of the enlightenment uh, thinkers in Europe she wrote books on uh, the rights of women uh, called the Vindication of the Rights of Women, and as we all know at the time, uh, France uh, created the Declaration of the Rights of Man, uh, and uh, there were, women did not have rights. So she believed that women should have uh, given equal rights and opportunities as men. Uh, one of her famous quotes is, Let men prove that women are weaker. And uh, Will, uh, Wollstone's crafts uh, had, a, had a huge significance on society. She called for equality. Uh, equality of women, fem she, uh, he, she was like a leader of the feminist movement. So what is the influence of the Enlightenment? It uh, fuels revolutions in the Americas and France. Uh, the Declaration of Independence uh, came out of the Enlightenment. It was because of, uh, it was built upon Enlightenment uh, ideas. The US Constitution and Bill of Rights were also built upon Enlightenment ideas. This was a video on the Enlightenment. I hope you liked it please like share subscribe the video to the channel uh, this was Ibrahim Darwish and see you later